Okay. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. Today I will show you two builds that you can use to maximize her meta potential. Now, of course for a disclaimer, most of these builds are not exactly the most free to play options, but they are the most optimal, which is why I'm going to show them off to show what your true potential could be by the time you, you know, get all the fodder you need to make all of this happen. Yeah. Of course, when it comes to optimal in this game, sometimes characters have only one build that really works. But for some characters like our presenter today, we have we have multiple builds. I'll explain the basic concept of how they work, and I'll actually show them in action as well, because that's a lot cooler than just showing you a picture of a build and talking over it. Now, let me get out of the way, and let's go ahead and start the showcase. What do you want? Now today, we're going to be showing off our enemy phase build. However, for our enemy phase build, instead of using Vengeful Final, we will be using Special Spiral. With the help of our good pal Valoria, we get to start off with a two-turn cooldown, and when anything initiates combat, we automatically get our Aether proc, and then when it goes back to four cooldown, our special spiral kicks in and hits it back to two. Okay. And from there on, anytime we get hit, we retaliate with a fully powered Aether yes. hit. This keeps us nice and healthy for multiple interactions as well Good as one-shotting the majority of things that will run into it. Yes. This can be made even stronger by bringing something like Caden with a full plus six spectrum buck, or if you're a little bit on the cheap side and you don't particularly have him, you can always use Brave Lucina as well. However, Brave Lucina is a little underused because of the breath effect not being as well utilized. But Loria giving out stat flies is not exactly the best unit, however, it's the best we can do since we require Valoria for the minus 2 cooldown. So making her support is not the worst option, because you do have the option of double tanking in case you actually somehow get sniped. Next up we have our Gale Force build. For this one I will be using Attack Rest Solo 4. Uh, you can use a different solo if you so please, yes. I just have the most expensive stuff on her. As well as using Armored Stride. This way she can move to move while being smited in or repositioned into an enemy team. We go in with low HP and we absolutely just decimate the first two units. Then. When it's light season, we have Peony as an additional dancer, which lets us go in even further. Now, we're just gonna finish off with the rest of the Gale Force suite with our good pal Sylvia and Valoria. And just like that, even without our solo active, we completely sweep this team in one turn. I think it's a good idea to show multiple examples of this, because Gale Force can be finicky sometimes, so you need to be able to weigh out how well you can Gale Force a team, either through taking damage by attacking or getting access to their bolt traps and run running into them beforehand. Now for this one, yes. our bolt traps are hidden behind a wall that we can't yes. reach normally. So instead of using those, we're going to take advantage of Dual Ephraim's armor My effectiveness turn? to take as much damage as we can, which will allow us to let our Dancer and Valoria come in to assist. 
Yes. I'm using reposition to get in, but it is a lot easier to use sure mine. Thing. And just for fun, I decided to box in the Lysithia. So I have one more Gale Force example. This one will be going against uh, a team where the Bolt Traps are not in the best spot, but also we don't particularly, may not have the means to get everybody in at one in one turn. So for this one, we're going to have Valoria position herself in a way that we can get at least Gwendolyn and Valoria to do their Gale Force combo. Because in this whole turn, we, are, we won't really be taking too much yes. damage or really any damage at all. So. At okay. least for Light Season, we have Peony to help us out. Bunny. Although I guess it doesn't matter too much for this team. However, it does help us if we need to have Valoria be a position away where she needs to initiate on something and she's more than two spaces away. Or something like that. It's better visually. Anyway. My turn. With that, we yes. managed to trick the AI into running want? into us. And then there we go. We basically covered it and we get the bully to Alzheimer in the corner. Another option is to use Distant Defense 3 for your seal in case you need okay. to tank a little bit extra if you can't wipe the team out in Ready one go. Move? It's also really good if you want to proc your Gale Force and take out two units that would otherwise be a problem yes. on enemy phase. If you decide you want the not users to lead into your Gale Force team, you can use Wings of Mercy, however, you may have to guarantee something like using Heavy Blade for your Sacred Seal. And Wendy's base want? attack isn't exactly heavy blade material. Unless you're running a lure with Altina, then by all means. However, I find it more efficient to lead with her and have the rest of the units follow up behind her. Ready? 
ready to move. My turn. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed all of these build ideas and hopefully have encouraged you to bring out your maximum potential for your Gwendolyn. If you enjoyed this video and you want to make and you want to see me do more of these, I plan on possibly doing one for Leon if this gets enough attention. You know, like, comment, sub, all that good stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys another time. Peace.